Hello everyone and welcome to my video today which shows you how to create such an adorable and timely holiday ornament using Christmas traditions and essentials. Now, if you've seen the Christmas traditions um, collection on the Brilliance website, you know that it has an ornament maker, an ornament cover, no, a snowflake maker, an ornament cover maker, and 3D reindeer and sleigh. Well, I had seen a post on Facebook about someone who had done a freestanding lace sleigh design that was a Christmas ornament that had the year in it. So I said, hmm, I wonder if I can use the sleigh, half of it, part of it, from Christmas traditions and turn it into my own ornament. Although this is specific to Christmas traditions and in Brilliance Essentials, okay, this is the sleigh, this is the if you notice the little ornament holder, that's a snowflake spike. Ah. <laughs> but you can think of the, there is some customizing parts because we have to take out part of that sleigh. So you learn to use part of your essentials to customize existing designs to create your need. And hopefully you find this um, a helpful video. So let's just pop into the software and start customizing. To create this project, we will first go to our merge library design and make sure that we have navigated to the Christmas folder and select Christmas traditions. This is the one that has the sleigh interactive, which we will select and click OK. This will open our sleigh design into the center of our hoop. Now, the couple things that we want to choose first here in the interactive area is what sleigh we want to use, whether it's the left side, the right side, um, the sleigh bed, of which, of course, if we're not, we're just making an ornament, so we're going to just choose the left side. The other choice we want is if we want to have the candy canes to be um, two, what the swirls to be candy cane colored or a knot. The process is the same. You'll just have to do it multiple times if you choose the candy cane option. Um, eyelets are refer to the shape of the holly berries. So I'm not going to make them eyelets. Those have little holes in them. I would rather, which are great for putting crystals in if you'd like. I will choose the standard. Now, if, as you notice, I have my 130 by 180 hoop selected and I want my design to fit. So I will hold down my shift key grab a corner and resize it until the size of the design no longer is yellow. That means that it's going to fit into my hoop. So I have my design set and I have it the way I want to. Be sure that you have all the options set here before you go to the next step because the next step is changing this from an interactive into a stitch file. This is done by right clicking on the selected design and choosing convert to stitches. Convert to objects is a stitch artist level three function, but we will be using this um, essentials, which is convert to stitches. That removes all of the interactive properties and reveals the color breaks in our design. So this is where you can easily say, hey, I would like this background color, which is the freestanding, to be something different. For me, I went and clicked and changed it to a white color. Just choose this bone for to make it a different color here in our display. It's, this shows the st stitching order, so we know that the next red dots are gonna stitch, then the green, and finally, the swirls, which are in the gold color. Now, the swirl that I need to remove is this swirl right here, because this is the one that is going to be take the place of where my date is. So, how are we going to remove that? We are going to use the Sew Simulator. That is done up here using Stitch Simulator. And I am going to add color stops. So, I'm going to run through my design go through here and I am watching it stitch the top one. And once it gets to the very last stitch of that top one, I'm just paying attention. I notice that's when it goes to the next one, which is the one I want to remove. So I need to move back until the stitch cursor 
which is this little crosshair, gets to that very last stitch of this one. To fine tune, use the uh, back arrow, which is the left arrow, or the blue arrow to make sure that you get to the very last stitch. As soon as you see it's starting to stitch the gold, you may need to back up to get to the very last stitch of this one. At this point, this is where we want to add a color stop. So I'm going to click on the stop sign, scroll and choose a completely different color so that it's really obvious to me. And you'll notice here on our object list, we now have a color for this swirl all by itself. And the rest of this is in that teal blue that we've chosen. So just like before, we need to add a color stop at the very last part of this swirl. So let's zoom forward till we get to that blue. See, it's stitching the cover stitch of the blue, and we're going to watch till it gets to the very last stitch here. Use our little blue arrows to fine tune. Sometimes it's easier so that we don't go too far ahead. Get to the very last stitch, hit the stop sign, and we'll just choose a different color so that we have three colors in our object list here. This is the swirl I'd like to remove, so I will select it and hit the delete key on my keyboard. So now I have my nice open space here for my date. However, I would like these swirls to be the same color. So I am going to select them both by holding down my shift key and left clicking on both of them. Click on the one color button. And if you notice here, it automatically chose one of the colors. So it chose temple gold, which is great. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's all back to one color. Because these are both the same color, when I save my stitch file, they will be combined and the software, the machine will not stop. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, I never want to do this again. So I'm going to go up to my file menu and choose save as choose a location on my computer, choose the format that I want from the pull down menu that I'm working in. And I am going to call this um, slay 2021. And because I noticed right here, I have one that's the same exact name, I am going to type in the letter A so that we have, oh, maybe I'll type in the word ornament. That makes more sense, then I will know. So this is Slay 2021 Ornament, and I will click Save. So that will save my stitch file and my BE working file. Now let me zoom out. So I will go up to my compass rows and zoom out to the H, which is my hoop. The next thing I want to do is I want to put the date in here. So at this point, I'm gonna click on my lettering tool that puts ABC here, and I'm gonna type in 2021 and hit the enter key. Now the font that I chose for this was Dallas, so I will go to my font list, type in the letter D for Dallas because I knew that it was, this is the font that I like. You can choose any font that's on your computer, but this Dallas is from font collection number one, and I liked the style of the date. Now, I'm going to size it down so that it's, I know that it's going to fit here. Let me see if I can zoom in so that I'm working towards it. And I drag it with the corner to size it as small as possible. Now, I'm going to, I want it to be in this area, so I'm going to use the rotate corner to left click, hold, drag, and rotate it. As you can see, it is still too large for my um, design area here. So while it's selected, I'm going to go and choose a manually type in the number. I'm looking at the width number here. This currently is 38 and I'm going to pick a number like 30 and hit the enter key and it will automatically resize the height and the width. I may have to do this a couple times because I'm not sure exactly what my width is that I, I want to work at. Let's see, let me type in 25, boom. Ooh, that looks to be perfect. And I'm just gonna move it in so that it is not touching any of the stitches. I'm looking at the stitch here and the stitch here, and that's actually pretty darn close. Maybe rotate it a little bit more, click off of it. Perfect, I think that looks great just the way that it is. Now, I want it to be the same color green 
as is the holly berries. So I'm going to select it, go to the color chip, click on the color chip itself, and I can look through my sulky colors and find this Christmas green, but an easier way would be to click on palettes and that shows me the current page colors. So I will select the green that it is, which is the exact same color green, and it now matches perfectly as I'd like it. Okay, if I want this color to stitch with the other colors up here, I'm going to left click, drag, and drop it into so that it's stitching right afterwards. Yes, I could have also done a color sort. That would have worked as well. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing there's a little bit of extra white space here. It's bothering me. This is the beauty of working with our design. You can take a step back, look at it, and it's going a little bit diagonal. I think it fits in here better so that this you need to fiddle. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. Now, one thing, this is stitching on top of mesh. So one of the things that I will want to do with this, because this is a native BX font, I'm going to go to my stitch properties and make sure that it has enough underlay to hold the stitches while they are on top of that mesh. Currently, it's set to only have an edge run. I'm also going to turn on the satin underlay which will give it a, a satin stitch. Let's look at our turn off our 3D to see what that looks like. Let's zoom in so we can actually see closer, okay? Before, we, just, we had satin was turned off. Can you see it just has the running stitch? I'm gonna turn on satin. That adds a little more underlay. For me, I'm going to make the edge run. That is the distance that the underlay is from the edges. So I'm going to decrease that so that those edges can become a little bit more defined on my freestanding lace. Um, I just don't want them to st sink in. I really want them to hold their shape since I do know this is on wash away stabilizer and the quote unquote fabric is only this mesh. So I'm st setting my inset to be 0.5, which means I want to make sure that when I hoop, my, I'm hooping my water soluble stabilizer, which means that this will have a nice, clean edge when I'm stitching it. Let's turn on our 3D stitching back again. Oh, one other thing I will want to make sure I check on this on the stitch tab is I want my, my machine to not, this is a native font, so I want it to use the nearest connecting point so that I won't have to trim any jump stitches because I know that if it, and there won't be any tails on the back side. So using the nearest point, because these numbers are almost touching each other, it's going to use that information and connect at the nearest point possible. This is a feature of native BX fonts. And your native BX fonts are ones that have the needle, no needle here in the list, and they have been published with that nearest connection point feature. Couple, just a few things to keep in mind. Okay, so here I have my sleigh and I'm ready to add some sort of hanger for it. This was also done using the interactives from the Christmas Traditions Collection from the Snowflake. Now if I select the Snowflake and I click OK, that puts a big snowflake here in the center of my screen. On the interactive tab, there is an option here under design, which lets you customize exactly what is going to be shown here. Right now, it's showing me the complete snowflake. From the pull down menu, I can choose to see just one of the spokes. And this is what I'm going to use up here for my hanger. I, this, is, this was spoke number one, which means I can adjust mid number one using this little pull down, and I can go through and choose the midpoint that I'd like. Now, the midpoint that I'm referring to, that is this section right here. And look, we, oopsie, don't need to change the points. I need to go to mid one. <laughs> and you can scroll through and find the one that you find to be the most 
unique or what you want to have for your particular design. Oh, this one looks kind of fun, but I know it need for this part here, which is the tip, I need to make sure that this has a hole in it as well. So I need to go to tip one and see which tip works at the top. Oh, that might be kind of pretty. I need to have one that has a hole at the top. Oh, there's a nice diamond. That might work. Actually, I kind of like the way that that looks. But you can have fun and choose whatever mid and whatever tip that you'd like. I'm going to use the rotate tool to now rotate this so that it is going straight up and down. Move it to where I want it on my air on my um, sleigh. Now, as you notice, this is going to be overlapped just a bit because of the spoke that I chose. And not a problem. You do need to make sure that this spoke is underneath this edge. So it is going to have to overlap. If this bothers you, go back to the interactive and choose a different mid. Now, once you choose a different mid, it will regenerate the entire, it puts it back to normal because it has to and regenerate the whole thing. So now you still have to go turn it around, rotate it so it's straight up and down move it into the place. But make sure that there is some connecting point here. You can't have it open because if you do, there's going to be a gap there. You need to have it overlap significantly so that the underlay of the sleigh is connecting to the underlay of this spoke. Now, if we look at it, notice the spoke is on top because we have it stitching last. To solve that, we're going to select it in our object pane, right click on it, and choose to move first. This allows us to preview our design exactly how it's going to stitch. Now looking, remembering how our design is stitching here. The first color is white. If we want this, choose the color that you want the, the snowflake holder to be. If you want it to be the same color as the white mesh, simply click on that color chip. It's still on the current page and it allows you to choose a different color. You can actually even preview them to see which one you think works best. I actually kind of like the white. It, it, that's my choice. I'm going to choose it. It's when I save this, if you notice, it's going to put these two together. So I am ready to save my work. I will click on the save button to save it to my computer. When I'm ready to stitch it at my machine, I will go to the file, choose save a stitch file as, select my USB and head on off to the embroider machine. Hopefully you enjoyed these easy customizing lesson on how to make a dated ornament using essentials and the Christmas traditions collection. So let's talk about stitching these. Um, obviously, we can you can change it up, create whatever options that you want with these ornaments, changing the date, adding names, whatever it is. If I was stitching one in the hoop and I was using the smallest two possible, I used one layer of water-soluble fibrous stabilizer. Not the clear one, that's a topping, the one that's like fibrous. If you choose to do more than one in a hoop, I usually, just to be on the safe side, I will use two layers of water-soluble fibrous stabilizer just because freestanding lace designs have a lot of strength, a lot of pull, and I didn't want to have to end up with any mess at the end. I wanted it all to be perfect. Once they were done stitching, carefully trim around them to get rid of the stabilizer because some of these pieces may be large enough to use in a smaller hoop in the future. Also, when I rinse them out, I do not rinse them completely. I try to leave a little bit of the water-soluble stabilizer in them so that when they are dry, they have a little bit of body to them. When I dry them, I do put them on a flat surface and what we would call in lace making or crocheting, you block it because as it dries, that's the way it's going to look. So I use pins. I may use my uh, wool felt pad with a uh, piece of uh, scrap cotton on top of it, just so nothing soaks into my wool pad, straighten them out, place them into place so that they work well. If you find that the, the stem, the 
a um, ornament holder, which is our snowflake spike, is a little floppy because that can happen. Uh, add a little extra starch mod um, or other stiffener, fabric stiffener, terial magic will work wonderful to make sure that your ornament is nice and, and dry. I do... I will do a final press without steam, and when I'm done, put it between uh, two pieces of um, scrap fabric, press them so that they're nice and flat, and there you have a beautiful ornament so that you can give as a gift or put it on your own tree. Hopefully you found this um, an educational uh, video. I have put links to Christmas traditions and essentials in the description of the video. I appreciate it if you use my link as I do make a small commission on this, but have some fun with your program and enjoy. Bye.